Good morning, good morning. Welcome to New Hope Baptist Church. Let's take our songbooks, find a place. We'll stand together, turn to page 213. Amen. How many have glory in your soul today? And praise the Lord. Welcome to New Hope Baptist Church. Those that are joining us by Facebook, we want to welcome you as well. And uh, how many woke up to a white lawn this morning? And we got hit with frost this morning. Not ready for that, but uh, it was a beautiful sunrise, as someone mentioned. I said, did you see the white? And they said, but did you see the sunrise? And, uh, and putting a better perspective on it. But uh, several people are gone, as you can see. So many people are ill. And a text last night said, Pastor, won't be there. And uh, whether it's flu bug or whatever, pray for Juan and Espy. And they are traveling to Texas right now. His niece, uh, same age or just a little bit older than him, his sister's daughter passed away on uh, Thursday. And uh, so be in much prayer for them as they travel. Miss Eileen is healing well. Uh, she has some pain, so continue to pray for her. Angie is doing much better today, praying that she'll be released here shortly. We're praying for that. Got a report this morning. Carmen's doing well, and uh, but I'm sure there's others that I miss. But be in much prayer for all of those and uh, those that are out, those that are traveling, those that are quarantined still and uh, hoping to get back soon. But let's go, Lord, in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this wonderful day that you've given us, that we can come to your house and just worship you and praise you. And although all of the pains and illnesses and sicknesses that we face here and trials, uh, one of these days when we get home, we'll never face them anymore. 
And, uh, Lord, I pray that you'll give us the strength that we need to make it through our each and every day. For those that have had surgery, Lord, continue to touch their body, take pain away, heal them quickly. And then also those that are traveling in flight right now, Lord, give them traveling mercies, give them safety. And, uh, Lord, allow them to return uh, Tuesday safely. And, uh, Lord, I pray the word will be preached at the funeral. Then, Lord, for those in the hospital, touch their bodies as well. Those that are homesick, Lord, we love you. Meet with us here tonight. We pray in your precious and holy name. Amen. Brother Steve. You may be seated. Take your books to page 37. There will be no dark valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, there will be no dark valley. Page 37. Shall we gather at the river?
again, good singing here this morning, and thank you for that, and uh, uh, pray for Brandon and Autumn. They're in uh, Wisconsin with his parents and uh, spending a week there, and so be in prayer for him and her as well, and Jason. I'll leave you with a few announcements. Do remember, Wednesday night, be here tonight, I should say. Don't skip tonight. Be here tonight. And for the service, we'll have a wonderful time. And, and it's, again, we're taking a scenic trip through the Bible, looking at the book of Hebrews tonight. And so be here tonight for the service. Then Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, uh, be here for that. And then uh, the upcoming events, men's prayer breakfast. It's hard to believe we're almost to uh, November. And uh, turn your clocks uh, we fall back. We gain an hour. We're almost to November, right? What did I say? Almost to November and uh, uh, it, almost Christmas. Can you believe that? How many have got your Christmas shopping done? How many haven't started? That's good. I haven't given you my list yet. And, uh, but no, it's hard to believe it's, it's, going to, uh, uh, it's going to be here before we know it. And uh, uh, in how quickly this year, but men's prayer breakfast on the sixth time change is going to be the seventh, but turn your clocks back one hour. And then ladies craft day also on the sixth from nine to 12 in the morning. And if you have any questions, see my wife about that. And the 14th is camouflage Sunday. And then we have the Tuesday night praise and prayer service. And then we'll be adding some more here uh, to the calendar coming up into December. Church Family of the Week is Mike and Donna Toppin. And then the Zongs to China continue to be in prayer for them. And the cleaning privileges here, you can leave your tithes and offerings in the back uh, there. I need to meet with the deacons right after the morning service, if I could, in my office, just for a few moments, go over a few things quickly and uh, uh, with that. But how many have had a good week this week? It has been a wonderful week. Looking forward to this week. And uh, any day you can wake up is a great day that God has given to us a great opportunity uh, to share the gospel as well. But Steve, would you come and lead us in one more song here this morning? I think the focus needs to be it's almost spring. and Time to start planting that garden again, Brother Dale. Yes, yes. Getting real close. Page 9, if you want to stand together one last time. Room at the Cross, page 9.
Thank you, Brother Steve, Miss Chatty. Good to see Brandon back there and uh, wearing a brace. Praise the Lord that God watched over him. And uh, a few broken bones and busted up a little bit, but praise the Lord. Been much prayer for you and Brian as well. God is good all the time, isn't he? And uh, sometimes he reminds us how good he is. And, uh, and so continue to pray for them as well. If you would turn your Bibles to uh, Revelation chapter 21, Revelation 21, and we have been looking at and going through the book of Revelation. There's only two more messages after this. We'll jump into chapter 22 and have two messages in chapter 22, and we'll be finished with the book of Revelation. And and uh, one man came to me and said, Pastor, I think what you need to do is just jump right back and go through it all over again. Now, I'm not going to be doing that, but I pray that it has been a good study. I pray that you have learned some things about Revelation and about what we are going to be, what's going to happen during the tribulation, what's going to happen <clears throat> when we get to heaven, the new city, as we'll be looking at the description this morning. I heard a preacher this past week I was listening to, and, and uh, he said it's, it's kind of like uh, the end time is kind of like Christmas and Thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving is coming. How many of you know that? But we don't talk about Thanksgiving much. We do talk about Christmas. I mentioned how many of you have done your Christmas shopping. Now, uh, your vice president said you should do your Christmas shopping now because there might not be any product in December. And uh, she made that statement a couple weeks ago. And uh, so I ran out and got my kids the exact same thing I was going to get them. That's nothing. And uh, I hope they appreciate that. But no, uh, my daughter says, no, 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 no. I don't care about the other ones, but me, yes. Uh, but no, we, uh, we talk about Christmas. We plan for Christmas. Go to the store right now. There's Christmas paraphernalia hanging all over the place. And Christmas is kind of like the second coming of Jesus Christ. He said, we all look toward that and we read about it, we study it, but we never think about the rapture. The rapture is Thanksgiving. As we focus on Christmas, Thanksgiving is going to sneak up on us. You know, the same thing is going to happen with the rapture. Uh, we are looking toward the end times, looking at what's going to take place, looking at the celestial city that will come down from heaven. But before all of that takes place, we're going to be raptured out of here. How many are waiting for that day? What an exciting day that's going to be when we are raptured out of here and we are taken to our final home. Remember what the Bible says in Peter, we're just pilgrims and strangers in this land. This is not our home. We have a home waiting for us. In uh, Revelation chapter number 21, starting in verse number 9, the Bible says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God on her. Light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square and the length of it as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs 
the length and the breadth and the height of an equal of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof in hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, um, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the uh, sardonyx, the sixth sardis, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth tobes, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh uh, jasoneth, the twelfth amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each several gate was on one pearl of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter in, uh, into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abominations, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life." Now, as we've talked about in these last several weeks, and last week we looked at uh, this beautiful city, this new heaven, and this new earth. Remember that we had talked about uh, it, 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 before creation, we have eternity past. When God created, we stepped into time. Everything that we know of is time. We are uh, based on time. I was talking to uh, Jeremiah. I so appreciate him uh, getting the drinks up here uh, each week. And many times, I'll, if you see me, I'm trying to get someone's attention and I'll, I'll do this. And uh, not that I have a drinking problem, but could someone bring some water up here so if, if my throat gets dry, um, I'll have something to drink. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Who in the world would bring something up there for you to drink? If your throat gets dry, it is time to stop. And uh, I said to him, now, I uh, asked him where he gets the water, and he said, I get it out of the jug. I said, that's good. Never get cold water for a speaker because cold water will lock your throat down. And my, one of, my wonderful, lovely wife said, I thought that's the whole point of it. Uh, so your time would be shorter. And so everything is about time. And uh, you say, oh, you're making that up. No, she really said that this morning. Most of the stuff I make up, uh, I, I make up, uh, but, but not this morning. So I don't know if she's, she's wanting me to, to finish sooner, uh, but I've only got one or two pages, so that should take most of the day. You're saying, oh, come on, we got that much time on our hands. But what we're talking about when the end of the millennial, the thousand years, we step out of time into eternity where there is no time. Nothing is based upon time. As we'll talk about, there is no darkness. It is all light in heaven. Uh, Billy Sunday said this, if we could get an appreciation for what heaven is, we would all be so homesick for heaven, the devil wouldn't have a friend left here on earth. That's so true. If we could just begin to think about what heaven truly is. When you talk about heaven, you are talking about a grand and glorious place. We are talking about that future home that God is preparing for us. You know, the more one appreciates it, 
the more one uh, desires it. When you plan for a trip or you uh, look at something or maybe you're saving money to, to buy it, the closer you get to having enough money or the closer you get to the trip, uh, the, the more you welcome it, the more excited you become uh, for it. Now, as we looked at uh, the last week, as we looked at the first eight verses, and the new heaven and the new earth. Why did God make a new heaven and a new earth? Because God purified everything that was evil. Now remember when you, you talk about the Lord Jesus Christ, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father to, at this very moment. God is sitting on the throne where he has always been. But we have someone who travels from earth to heaven constantly, and that's the devil. So you say, is there sin in heaven? And that's where sin began, with Satan. And so God is going to purify the heavens and the earth. He's going to create new. We are going into a beautiful brand new home. Some of y'all... Uh, uh, when you got married, you, you had a house, you were working on it, you were trying to uh, fix any mistakes in it, or you buy a home, and the first thing you do is you work on a painting as Darren has done for his son and repaint all the rooms and fix any problems. Uh, but there's something about going into a brand new home. You know, God's preparing a brand new place for us. It is going to be a wonderful place now, this present heaven and earth will exist no more. Now, as we look at verses 9 through 27, we learn uh, much more about the new heaven and new earth. Now, again, God doesn't tell us everything. God just gives us a taste of what it's going to be like. Now, it is described in verse 10 as a great city or a holy city. Look at verse 10. It says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city. If you have a habit of underlining in your Bible, underline the phrase, that great city or the holy Jerusalem. Now, again, it is called the new Jerusalem. Remember what the Lord Jesus Christ said in John 14 too? He says, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. In my Father's house are many mansions. He talked about going and building for us. I believe what John was talking about there, he's not talking about the heaven that is right now presently. He is talking about the new heaven and the new earth. He's not talking about going to the old. He said, I'm preparing a place. This is the place that he is talking about, the place after the millennial, after the great white throne judgment, this place for all eternity. In verse 9 we read, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Now the angel was saying, you want to get a glimpse of your future home? Let me show you it. You know, uh, Brother Steve and Miss Julie show pictures of their, of their future home as it is building and, and moving forth the construction. And, and this is what the angel said, hey, John, you want to see your future home? Let me just give you a little glimpse of it. Let me give you a little picture of what it's going to be like. He says, write some things down. I want to talk about a few things here on this new Jerusalem or this great city. First of all, the dissension of the city in verses 10 and 11. Now, John saw the great city, holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven. Now, I want us to notice the preparation that has taken place here. Now, look back at verse 2 for just a moment. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, it's just coming down. Now, this is a place from God. God is his architect. God is the designer. God is the builder of this city. This is a city of divine origin. Remember what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11. We won't turn there this morning. But Hebrews 11.10, the Bible says, Abraham looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Again, in John 14, 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare 
a place for you. So the city that John sees descending is the same one that Abraham said, I'm looking for this city, and the same one that Jesus Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you. But the preparation is by God. Listen, God, everything that God does is good. Everything God does is good. If God's the creator of this city, imagine what it's going to look like. Listen, there's been bad builders. There's been bad architects, but not with God. God is perfect in everything. You also see the glorification. Look at verse 11. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Now the glory of God will radiate from this city. Now it, it, it bears the mark of its creator in every facet and detail. Every facet of this bears the mark of God himself. Now the word light actually speaks of its brilliance. Now to John the city was like one great brilliant light and that being the glory of God. John described this brilliance as a jasper stone. Now, when we think of a jasper, what the Bible speaks of jasper is not the same jasper that we think of today. The jasper stone that John is talking about is more like the diamond that we see today. It says it's clear, it's brilliant, it shines. You imagine, uh, uh, you know, what is the big thing? You, you know, I asked someone the other day, I said, uh, uh, are you guys going to get engaged? And he said, she says, do you have a ring for me? Do you have a ring? Have you talked about marriage? Do you have a ring for me? What's that one thing that uh, if you're dating and you're going to get engaged, she wants that diamond ring up on her finger. Here, so the word jasper, as we know, speaks of a stone like our diamond. John saw this city as one big diamond refracting and reflecting the glory of its designer, that being God. Now, it's important to understand, as we'll look at here in just a moment, where is God? Even Moses asked if he could see God, and we'll look at that here in a moment in Exodus. And where we are going to be, the difference between Moses and us, one of these wonderful days. You know, everything about heaven is going to be a reflection of the God who loves us. Remember, uh, turn your Bibles back to Exodus chapter 33. Let's look at that. Exodus 33 in your Bibles, Genesis, Exodus, Exodus 33 and verse 18. Exodus 33, 18 Moses is talking to God himself, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand, and will, will, hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Now Moses could not look upon the face of God. He could not look upon uh, the glory of God and the brilliance and the radiance of God. But in heaven, God will not be restricted we will not have to be hidden in a cliff. We will not have to look at the hinder parts of God himself. We will be able to look at the face of God in heaven. Folks, that ought to excite us. 
to know that God's not going to be hiding from us. God is going to be in our very presence and we're going to be in the very presence of God. This new heaven, this holy city that God's prepared. Folks, we, we can get discouraged down here, but let's not forget this isn't our home. As I mentioned, you know, some people say, and, and, and never thought about it until you really look at it, uh, some pay, say that uh, this is, uh, we, we are going through the tribulation and, and the millennial and, and there is no heaven, there is no hell. This is heaven and hell. And on your bad days, that's hell. On your good days, that is heaven. And we say, oh no, that's contrary to God's word. But if you look at it differently as we looked at it last week, this is as close to heaven that an unsaved person will ever get. And this is as close to hell that a saved person will ever get. Your worst day doesn't even come close to what an unsaved person is going to face. Your best day isn't even close to what you're going to face in heaven. The glory of this place, the glory of this city. And the angel has given John a, a, a little bit of a taste of what this new uh, heaven, this new city is going to be. His full glory will be manifested so much so that the new Jerusalem will not need a son. He will be the light of the city. You not only see this dissension, but the description of the city. In verse 12, back in, our, in Revelation, in verse 12, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Notice the description, the details of the city. It says a, a wall great and high. Now the city is surrounded by huge walls. As John gives us the details of this city, we learn that the walls, uh, that the, that the walls have 12 gates, three gates on all four sides being 12 gates. Now, on the 12 gates, three on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. These gates have the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Each gate has a name. But also each gate has an apostle's name. It also has the foundation, has the church name. Listen, we are the foundation. We're the saved. We're the ones that are going to heaven. You know, in this, the details here. These angels are no doubt uh, placed there to attend to both God and his people. It says that there are angels placed at each gate says the name written therein, which are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Again, they are uh, inscribed onto these gates, celebrating through all of eternity God's covenant relationship with them. This beautiful city, the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes. Now, the arrangement of the gates is the same way that it was uh, back with the temple and, and, and had the three gates on each side. And now you have the new city, the same thing here. In verse 14, it says, The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and that inscribed in these foundations were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now, the 12 foundations also celebrate the church which upon the apostles were built. Yes, upon the Lord Jesus Christ, upon this church, upon this uh, rock, I will build my church. You see, at the top of each gate was the name of a tribe of Israel. At the bottom was the name of an apostle. But you see the details, this city, and we'll look at how big it is right here, the dimensions of the city. Now, this city is a big city. How many of you like driving through cities? How many of you don't mind cities? Allegan's more than enough for me. Yes, I drive through big cities, but I, I have no, no desire. My uh, niece and, and her uh, boyfriend went to New York, and, and he was telling me about it, and I knew they'd went there and put some pictures on Facebook. And, and he said, we drove into New York, downtown New York. He said, big mistake. He said, there was a big sign there that says, no standing. 
He said, not a problem. I'm not standing. I'm just parking here. He said, yeah, $300 in tickets. He said, no standing means no parking. He said, I wish they would have just said no parking out there. He said, it was just, he said, I don't mind driving in cities. And it was just a train wreck trying to get around. I don't like cities. I don't like driving through big cities. I do it. It's not a problem. You pay attention. But it's not my favorite thing to do. Country life, I can handle that. I like that. You, you know, you have to watch out for pedestrians in the city. You have to watch out for deer in the country. But this city, this is one big city here. What are the dimensions? Now, the angel pulls out a heavenly ruler and shows us how massive this city is. It is explained in verse 16. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth, and, the, and he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. The city is a cube. Every side is the same length, height, the breadth, the depth, everything is the same. Now, depending on where you look and what, uh, what ruler you, you use, some say it's 12, 1300 miles, some say 1500 miles. Uh, but think about it, if it was even 1300 or 1500 miles in length, every side of the city is 1200 or 1500 miles. That's a big city. If you go from one corner of the cube to the opposite corner of the cube, that's almost 2,800 miles or 3,000 miles. This is from Canada down to Mexico or for the Atlantic over to Colorado or past that. This is the size of the city. I think you were saying, Brother Potter, that if you were to take in the Jacksonville uh, city limits, you said that if you took every person in the world and stood them in the, all of the city limits, they wouldn't touch each other. But uh, you look at how big God is preparing this place for us. You say, well, what if I don't like my neighbor? You don't have to worry about that. You'll love everyone in heaven. And be careful because that person that you may not like, that fellow Christian, God might make him your next door neighbor. He said, I'll show you what love is. I'm going to place him right next to you. So you need to love your neighbor. The dimensions here, when you think about the size of this city, though, how big this is. In verse 17, they measured the wall in 140 and four cubits. Or 72 yards. I believe this is talking about the thickness of the wall. It's 216 feet thick, the wall is. But John goes on to describe the materials that are used in the wall. Listen, we're having a hard time getting uh, materials right now. How many of you tried to buy some wood this past uh, summer, this past uh, uh, spring? A two before that was $2.50 was $12.50. A sheet of plywood, some $50, $60 for a sheet of plywood that shouldn't cost you but nine bucks or less than that. Wood's at a premium. And we were trying to find a wood for different projects and different things and you couldn't find it and you couldn't buy it. Think about the materials that God's going to use in this city for us. He describes the city in verse 18, and the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. As we saw earlier, the jasper is, is what we know as a diamond. Now these massive walls are translucent like a diamond for which the glory of God shines through. How many of you ladies like diamonds? How many don't like diamonds? How many like gold? How many if you were given like a three carat diamond, you wouldn't turn it down? I mean, if you want to give me one, that's fine. We'll pawn it off and, and uh, think of what you could buy with a three carat diamond if it was real. How about gold? How many ladies like gold? How many ladies like chocolate? How many ladies just don't like anything at all? Some of you are like... Whatever. 
<laughs> How many would like your husband just to make you a meal sometime? Well, guys, you're in luck. They didn't raise their hands either on that, and I can't see back to my wife, so I'm in good hands here. How many just wish my time would run out tonight, this morning? The same people that keep raising their hands. Used to, well, I better not say anything with my, my daughter and wife because they uh, hopefully will cook this afternoon. But think about this, this city that God is building for us. The material, God doesn't build a stick build. He doesn't build a wooden that will, that will fade away. The materials that God uses here. In verse 19, John turns to the fountains or the foundations of the wall of the city. He describes these foundations are garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first described is jasper, which we've already seen is a diamond. Also sapphire, a brilliant blue stone. Chalcedony, uh, the third stone is sky blue in color with colored stripes. An emerald bright green. Uh, Sardonyx, a red and white striped stone. Sardis, a common quartz stone found in various shades of red. You see chrysolite, a transparent gold or yellow-hued yellow stone. Beryl, a stone found in various colors, including shades of green, yellow, and blue. Topaz, a yellow-green stone. Chrysoprase, a gold-tinted green stone. Jasoneth, a blue or violet-colored stone in John's day. Amethyst, a purple stone. You know, a, a really a glorious panoply of what God is doing here. All of these different colors coming together and the brilliance of it, John says, is beyond even speaking. You think about this great city here. In verse 21, the Bible says, And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. Can you imagine the clam that had that pearl? That's one big pearl because it wasn't just a little gate. It's a large gate. There's so much to that in representing, you know, how a pearl is, is, a, is created inside of a clam. Either there's a wound or a piece of sand or something in there, and it's a wound, and it will take and start covering that and protecting itself. And through that pain and through that uh, sorrow, it builds a beautiful, beautiful pearl, kind of representing the Lord Jesus Christ and what he went through for us. Every time you walk through that gate, You'll represent the Lord Jesus Christ, but the gates are made of pearls. You know, ladies get excited about golden earrings and necklaces and, and pearl earrings and pearl necklaces. Listen, the, the, the streets of heaven are made of gold. We're walking on gold. We count it as a, as a precious material and a precious metal. And God said, that's what I've made my streets out of. Walls of jasper, streets of gold, gates of pearl. What a beautiful city that that's going to be. The last thing here is the distinction of this city. In verse 22 and beginning there, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Now we've already seen certain things that will not be found in this city. If you turn back to verse 4. It says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. John already covered some things that won't be there. There'll be no trials. There'll be no sorrow. There'll be no pain. There'll be no tears. There'll be no sin there. But there's all some other things that are going to be absent in this city. There will be no sanctuary. Look at verse 22. The Bible says, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. There had been a temple on earth 
from the time that Moses and them created uh, the tabernacle and, 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 and uh, when they left Egypt and God said, here's what I want you to build all the way through uh, the beginning in Revelation and then saw a temple in heaven. There's always been a temple here on earth from Moses on. But not in the new city. There won't be a temple. Why? Because we'll have God himself. What's the purpose of the temple? That's where you go and meet God. God would, would meet them there. The Shekinah glory was there in the temple and in the tabernacle. We won't need that in heaven because we'll have God himself. We'll be able to worship and praise. Can you imagine standing in the very presence of God and worshiping him? This new temple, there will be the very presence of the Lord God there will be no need for a church, for a chapel, for a cathedral. Every moment will be consistently and constantly in His presence. You also see in verse 23, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. There will be no sun. In heaven, there will be no cycles of time such as day and night. You know, uh, the night tells us when it starts to get dusk, you know that it's getting later. Of course, this time of the year, you, you look and say, man, it is getting late and it's 5.30 or 6 o'clock. And then you have fall back in time and it's dark at 6 o'clock. I like it. I, I, I kind of like it light later in the, in the evening. And in midsummer, when it's, when it's light later on, but there will be no moon, there will be no sun, there will be no time. It'll be sunny all the time. How does that sun come? It's from the light of that beautiful city because of the glory of God that shines. In verse 24, And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. You say, wait a minute, what do you mean the nations? What is being talked about here? I believe that the, na the word nations refers to people of every walk and diversity of life. Every ethnic group here is mentioned. People from every tongue, every tide, uh, tribe will occupy this city. And then the kings of the earth. I thought God was the king. Why would a king uh, be set up? I believe, in my opinion, it refers to the saints of God who ruled and reigned with him. But there will be no sanctuary, no son. But look at verse 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut all at all day uh, by day, and there shall be no night thereof. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abominations or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Folks, there will be absolutely no sin in heaven. We looked at that last week, but there will be no sin in heaven. Nothing that can defile. Nothing that can bring uh, uh, anything that would bring a, a shame to our, our, our Lord and Savior. God won't have to rule with an iron rod during this time. Why? Because it's perfect. Everything. You know, in ancient cities, walls were to protect the city. Then at night, the walls and the gates would be, would be shut. But the gates of this city are always open to come and go, worshiping a holy God. Listen, there will be nothing unholy or unclean. The only people there are those who have the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, only the saved. You know, you hear a lot of things in our world that, you know, that person was a good person. They'll be in heaven. Good things don't get you to heaven. A relationship with Jesus Christ does. Accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior is the only thing that will get you to heaven. Not tithing. I worked at the funeral home for several years when, 
we came and helping uh, Steve Vanderveen here at Gordon. You know, there was something that I'd never, I'd never seen until you worked there. And, and Steve said, uh, you're going to see something and hear something. Everybody was a good person. And as a pastor, you know that that's not true. This man was a saint. And you look and say, that man was not a saint. He was a wicked, vile citizen of our community. But the preacher, they'd stand up and say, what a wonderful man. I can't wait till we see him in heaven. You know, and some of the things they'd say just were blasphemous. I can't wait till we have a big beer party in heaven. I hope the big man upstairs takes care of him. He's not the big man. He's God Almighty. I hate to tell you, you won't have a party in hell and you won't have a party in heaven. And hell is eternal suffering. And heaven's eternal worship. Of a holy God. Those good things don't get you to heaven. Only salvation. Bad things don't keep you out of heaven. Only salvation can get you there. When you think about this city. Again. The last part. They which are written in the Lamb's book of life. I pray that you are. I pray that you know the Lord Jesus Christ. As your personal Savior. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, I pray that you will help us to, to really search our hearts for a few things. One, to make sure that we are prepared and we are ready for that day when, when the rapture takes place. For, all, for those of us that are alive, if we are left behind, we have no chance of salvation. Lord, I pray that you help us, that we truly know you as our Savior. Lord, if someone here today does not know you as their personal Savior, I pray, I beg, I plead that the Holy Spirit will so convict their heart for the need of salvation that they won't run out of here lost, that they'll run to the, to the, to the altar for salvation. Lord, I pray that you will be with us here this morning with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Nobody's looking around. Maybe someone here this morning does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, their personal Savior. Maybe there's never been a time that you've asked Christ to save you. Maybe you think you're saved or believe you're saved or maybe you're just questioning your salvation. Don't leave here without knowing for sure. Is there anyone like that this morning? Say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Maybe you're watching by Facebook and you say, I really don't know that I'm saved. Salvation is very simple. It's agreeing with God about yourself. He's the Savior and you're the one that needs to be saved. You say, what is salvation? It's just asking God to forgive you of your sins and to come into your heart and save you and take you to heaven when you die. It's as simple as that, but it's believing that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you don't know Christ your Savior, don't leave here without knowing. Maybe someone here this morning say, Pastor, I just need to get some things right in my life. Maybe it's, 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 it's just the, the constant barrage of news and what's taking place in our country. It can steal our joy quickly. But listen, our joy is found in the salvation that God has provided for us, this new home. Make sure that your heart is, is, is the joy of your salvation is restored. Dear Heavenly Father, be with us in these next few moments. If someone does not know you as their Savior, I pray they'll give their heart and life to you, Lord. If someone this morning just, maybe, maybe they're praying for someone, asking God to save someone, change someone's life. Lord, we can lay it upon the altar and give them to you. But maybe someone here today says, Lord, just help me, encourage me. Lord, we pray in your precious and holy name. Amen. If you would stand to your 